I will never get tired of hearing this meeting is being recorded. Welcome um, to the women's cave, y'all. I mean, seriously, we don't know. We, we to, did. I did it again. You have to say welcome to the women's cave, and then you go on talking about this meeting is being recorded. Like, I, feel like, wait, wait, I feel like I should do exactly what the person's book said today. Is like, hush. Yes, you should. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. Just a little hush in my life will help. <laughs> what, what's that going to happen? No, never. never because never. then if you hush, then you just pick up your pen and then the whole no, world no, no, will no. That's true. That is so true. She is not lying. Because yes. I spent many of my formative years just being mad at people. Instead of laying them out, I wrote whole stories where where stuff bad stuff. Girl, happened. she used to like beat them up and kill. Them. It was hilarious. It was hilarious. I was but like, I mean, most writers do it. Come on, <laughs> if you're real mean to a writer, you know you was villain. And you a villain somewhere. <laughs> you're a villain in the story. Okay, anyway, yeah. I'm Jane, and I will know that. We remember this since you said so. High five, social, social distance. distance style. COVID's still out here, y'all. Don't oh, get too close. My. I'm not even gonna talk about that. Let's move. Yeah, let's, let's move on. All right. So, so yeah, we wrote literary life guys with pop poetry. Yeah, y'all, we actually have something interesting to say. Maybe even a little wise. Maybe, maybe. Uh, uh, yeah, no. Those actually, are, those are actually, no, that it was. It is wise. Books. They're wise. Books. They are wise. Okay, books. okay, fine, fine. Okay, the the wise books. We we agree. All right. So, and I thought divorce was bad with other life lessons. And I thought being grown up was easy. If only I would meet a memoir in first. And are you gonna include my book? Go ahead. Um, my books, Gun Solo, are Widow's Web and Born Coffee. All available on audible.com if you go pick them up. Or you can like check out all yeah. the things that your ladies are doing and pick up the other books that we haven't quite recorded yet on www.andithoughtladies.com. <clears throat> yeah, but y'all are here to hear about us going on and on about our books. You're here to hear from our wonderful guests. Wonderful guests, would you like to introduce yourself? Well, hello. I'm Rosemary Watola Tromer, and I live in Southwest Colorado. And I, I've been writing a poem every day for the last 15 years. And I do a crazy thing where I post them online every day too. I don't just write them, but I put my first drafts into the world every day. And uh, here are three things people should know about me. One is I'm a total doomsdayer. I really think we're, we're going to die. We're going down. And it's a funny thing because I'm a super positive person on an, not like on a daily basis, on a minutely basis, I'm pretty much an optimist, but in the big picture, I, I think we're screwed. So that's one. Uh, two is I don't understand sarcasm. My friends call me Dr. Ernest because I am ridiculously sincere and can't, um, I just, I make them like give me big cues that they're being sarcastic with me. And uh, and my two children are both super sarcastic also. So I, I struggle with that. And number three is that I really think that hard work is more important than talent. And uh, I don't think I'm particularly talented, but I sure do work hard and I'm utterly devoted to poetry. So I, three things. Why? I, like, I know. I, I love, didn't even, I, okay, I'm going to be honest. I didn't think I was going to like. She's, she's being funny, y'all. You know we love to have we love to have poets. On. She's, well, don't say, people might actually believe you. Well, no. uh, See, I just told you I don't understand sarcasm, okay. and then you do this. Yes. <laughs> now I totally believe you. Like, <laughs> oh my god! No, I mean that means no. you believe I like you. That's cool. That's all. Oh, no, no, no. Get the other. <laughs> have selective hearing. You don't have to understand oh. sarcasm if you have selective hearing. <laughs> oh, my head really hurts now. Okay, I'm so, so let's talk about I actually had a question. Writing a poem a day. Like, where do you find the time? Oh, well, you all of you. Where do you find it? Right? You make it. You make the time. I write poems late at night. I write them, you know, when it used to be when my kids had gone to bed, but now they stay up later than I do. Well, maybe they do. But it could be two in the morning, like it was last night, you know, before I hit send and put it out into the world. So, I always do it just instead of sleeping, I guess. I, I do poetry instead of sleep. Yeah, well, that's what writers say all the time. Who has time to sleep? You can write. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one of the people from England is like really funny. She's like, I, I called you uh, like at 10 o'clock your time. And we're like, who's up at 10? I write in the night. Like, no one's up at 10. 1230, maybe. 10. Ooh, it's early. <laughs> First thing that she said, we're well, out of her first story. Why are you, what is going on with you today? I forgot. I had a question about oh the my birthday. word. Doomsday. 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 Oh, it wasn't a question. It was a thought. I'm sorry. I wish it was. Aren't all, aren't 
oh, why does Doom think people though? Really? That truly? was my point. I was like, you're a poet. You're supposed to be semi sad and somber. It's a little <laughs> Tuesday. Yeah. So- yeah, I don't go for the sad and somber so much. I just go for the big, like the big worst case scenario. Like the, you know, the daily ups and downs. And poems love that, right? Like poems love daily ups and downs and that tension and that's all good. But I I take it, I take it all the way. I, I really think, you know, it takes only a couple of idiots to screw it up for the rest of us. And, the whole world. Yeah. and we know that they're they're out there. <laughs> We've got some good examples. So you're out there and have some power and you're like, oh today might be the day. <laughs> I turn up. Oh, you but said anyway. that you were an upbeat person most of the time. Do you think poetry helped you with that? Do you think, like, because you write it every day, that it helps get out some of those negative emotions or yeah. give you upbeat? You know what? No, it, it's. To- I think I was upbeat, period. Like, let's face it, that was my nature anyway. However, I do think that writing a poem day, it used to be I only wrote poems when I was upset. You know, mm-hmm. that was like the catalyst for it. And then when I started writing a poem every day, (laughs) let's hope you're not that upset every day. So I think part of what it did, I mean, there were so many benefits to this practice, but at least one thing that it did was that it allowed me to explore everything, to let everything be important enough. I mean, that's the joy. So that, you know, that the, that the pen suddenly, what does the, it's all blurred out. (laughs) The craziest screen. Yeah. Um, it looked like a feather pen. I was like, oh, so she's fancy. Wouldn't that have been cool? That would have been great. I always write with a feather pen. No, I yeah, don't. There you go. That's, just say it. Just say it. <laughs> I always write with uniball pens, black <laughs> uniball pens. They all like, like I just, I feel bad we're writing like, a book now and I was like, oh, first thing, we have to get black uniball pens. It's like a little <laughs> fair because they just, and they always write so smoothly. I right? feel it. It goes yes. like smooth. It's like it just goes through. The- right. And, and you then you have feel a it. And then it's like, oh, it stopped. You're like, oh, wait. And by that time, it's gone. It's, it's gone. gone. Yeah, have have to have this one. I think the thing is that that what what that daily practice did was it allows everything. And really, if you're going to bring it all in, there is absolutely so much wonder and beauty and glory and amazement to be had in every single minute that to it you can't ignore that like if you're going to write a daily poem you've got to be writing about what's happening daily and truly what's happening daily a whole lot of garbage and a whole lot of beauty and and so they get to come together and meet that is so very very true I think there's some beautiful yes. words for them to meet in poetry and oh yeah of course because we're poets so we're gonna definitely say that. that's right <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever feel soft, you'll step into the long long form genre or non yes in fact right now i'm writing the third book in an erotic romance trilogy so it's okay, been I'm years sorry. give me one sec did she say she write poetry every day and then she writes erotic romance yeah where do you find this time no nope, not really right <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy i've been doing it for a year this is my third i'm so i'm into book three it took, I have a partner. We did it. We came up with this idea together. We set up, we spent nine months coming up with the spine, the outline and book one took about a year and book two took about a year. And now I'm into, you know, I'll be done by the end of 2021 with this book three, and then we'll launch them all into the world. And it's so different. I don't know you guys, how much you notice about the difference between trying to write a novel, writing a poem, like writing a poem, I can sit down and do it. Right. And I'm really trained to sit down and do it, but the novel. Oh my God. Like the, it's trying to carry that whole fiction world. And then the amount of energy it takes to sit down and, and really enter that world. Like it's, it's almost impossible to get my butt in the chair. And then once I get it in and I'm finally in any, any, the smallest little thing will kick me out and then I'm out like for good. So it, I feel like if I get 15 minutes of writing, it's almost like a, a miracle. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's it's really hard. It's much, 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 much harder energetically for me to do the long form, but no, it's a lot I, of fun. I, I wrote long form. I, I've had one time I challenged myself. I, I was 17, but I wrote 26 novels in a year. So I was, oh my gosh. I busted out a novel every two weeks. That's crazy. Oh, I was better, really good at it. Wait, but you <laughs> must have learned so much. I was in high school. So I was learning everything I learned in a subject became fodder for the novel. Right. 
So everything. Just and that's, that's the great thing about writing, right? Is that absolutely everything is fodder. Every, 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 everything. The news, what your husband says, what your kids do, you know, what's happening in the garden, I'm everything. Today. Yeah. <laughs> like, Every a partly sunny day. You're like, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, literally, I just came up with a title for one of our uh, friends about the writing his book and a uh, poetry book. And I said, well, how old are you? And she told me. And I was just like, you should name it Senior Coffee, please. That's good. Yeah. Right. Because she's like 55. So I was like, you should even see your coffee, please. And then just talk about it. Like, because this is what your poems talk about anyway. Why not? Like, I'm a woman and I'm 55. I can't believe I'm 55. So send your coffee, please. And I was like, one of the sections should be a 55 cent coffee. Because that's how much a senior coffee is. You should do this. And she was like, oh, did you just get inspired by coffee? I was like, I love coffee. I get inspired by coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Let <laughs> me get back to the real business real quick. You have a podcast. Tell us a bit about that. Yes. Ooh, you know what? I've been thinking about it because watching the two of you interact is so much fun. And it makes me really jealous that Christy and I don't actually sit next to each other when we do our podcast. Uh, it's called Emerging Form and it's about creative process. We It comes out every other week with a main episode. And then every other week, there's a bonus episode with the same guest, whoever that was. And we focus on all the stuff it is to be a writer, you know, how you struggle, what's at stake, how do you carve out the time, how do you uh, meet a deadline, what, you know, just all of it, as much as, you know, just existential despair and, and the rest. <laughs> um, but we sit in our closets, you know, for recording purposes, just because it dampens the sound. So there we are sitting in our closets, you know, hours away from each other, surrounded by sweaters and dresses and shoes and scarves, but we, we both have such poor bandwidth. We don't even use video, you know, to see each other because it's not reliable where we live in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> okay. So, you know, the narcissism question comes out right after that when someone says they have a podcast and they have guests, the narcissism question is, so um, when do I come on? Right. You guys need to be on. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> you guys need to be on. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. It's obvious <laughs> already. <laughs> our wedding, we were going to discuss our wedding person of like laughter and being like, I so think one, one of my professors when I was in creative writing class, he asked me, how do you come up with the poetry, the poems that you pick for your book? I said, you throw it against the wall if it's sick, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. <laughs> that one stuck longer than anything else. That one goes in. That one's <laughs> good. <laughs> No, no, you don't want to talk about our process. But that is a sarcasm thing. Um, uh, I, see, I will this. never, I will never understand. You, you can, you can <laughs> trust. You'll be like, come on, Rosemary, you really had to get that one, and I'll be like, mm, I, I, I didn't. Yeah. Okay. I, actually, I was thinking, you know, what's really great is you can really go into society, like really high society, and be perfectly fine because a lot of times their stuff is jabs that are in sarcasm. You'd be like, oh, she's the sweetest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right now, like all pissed off they're gonna be with you like <laughs> oh my god will she ever get it <laughs> no. no i will never get it i will never get it i won't <laughs> oh yeah she has to i feel like that's a title of one of her books like i will never get it i will never get it i will <laughs> never get it okay, okay. that is the truth by the way let's talk about your actual book let's talk about hush no i was not gonna go with hush you have no but i love hush. hush it's so pretty okay we're going my son took that photograph. Isn't that nice? Yes. I asked the publisher, I'm like, could my son please, could we use some of his photographs for the cover? And they're like, well, sure. So. Oh, they agree? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so you have um, one of your sections, let me make sure I get it right. Because mm -hmm. as you can tell, I can't remember anything today. Is, nope. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. I want to ask I, you should have maybe had marked that. Yes, I should have. Yeah. Allowing our heads to move forward. How do you come up with that as the section say, say it what it is again the section title is bowing our heads to move forward bowing our heads to move forward that's a line out of one of the poems um mm -hmm. i wonder if i could find it and then i would read it to you but that might take me a second um yep so we'll are you able to edit it out if i take a second to find it yay you found the poem yay you <laughs> found it <laughs> I found it. It's called Good Morning Destiny. And what isn't a sign this morning? 
the way the alarm lost its ring, the scent of apples waiting to be peeled, the blue reveal morning behind morning mist, a green sign that reads paradise, the mountains themselves moving until it appears the sun rises, everything feels worthy of attention, of notice. We need not scour for omens. What doesn't have something to say to us about where we are going? Five black crows on the fence line, a missing glove, the trees shedding whatever no longer serves them, the sun so bright in our eyes, we must bow our heads to move forward. Wow, yeah, that is beautiful. She read it like a prayer. I know, right? I love it. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. I want to learn how to read like that. One day, one yeah. day. It's like one day when we grow up. Uh, that's a question I need to ask. Do all poets learn how to do this literary read? Oh my gosh. I like, could tell you that so many right. I'm going to, I'm going to talk smack about people, but here's the thing. I think a lot of poets don't read their work very well. I think a lot of poets read it there. They get this weird poet voice. Like I'm going to read it in the weird poet voice. And what isn't to sign this morning, the way the alarm lost its ring. Right. Oh my goodness. It's okay. When I hear that, I just assume that they're new to the poetry world and you know give them two three years and they'll they'll figure out the literary read <laughs> they'll, they'll even write out and they'll be like this is a literary they'll do the whole thing like as an introduction to an album song yeah. there I, we go there we go been for, what five years now like really in the public eye i still don't have a literary read <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm assuming there's a class and what, I just missed it. It's more important to be yourself when you're reading than anything, right? If, if, if you're, it, it's just about being yourself and being authentic to whatever it is you're saying, right? And I think to really feel whatever it is you're reading, right? Like that poem is kind of a prayer. It is a prayer, right? I wouldn't read every poem like that, but. Yeah, it's just, it's just, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the other book, which let me see if I can get this. Oh, that's what, even now. I love how it is a symbol and then a piece of a poem. It's, it almost feels like the entire book is the poem. You know, it was so much fun, this book. I, I feel like all I want to do anymore is collaborations. You know, I collaborate on this romance book and my podcast is a collaboration. You guys get it. It's so much more fun to do it with somebody else, right? And that that book even now came out of a collaboration that I did with this artist, Jill Sabella, who we had never met until we were put together to do a project for an art gallery. And they wanted to have a poet and an artist paired and they made 12 pairs. So we got put together and we were like, well, I don't know, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And we both liked spare. We, you know, we could both really go for like clean, simple, I was like, well, you know, what if, what if you do three line drawings and I do three line poems and let's just see. And we traded back and forth, you know, started both ways. So I'd send her some, she'd send me some. So we did a program or that for that show, we ended up doing 13 and then they were so well received, like they sold out, like amazing. It was incredible. We were like, what people like them. So we ended up doing a book. It was, and that little book, it's a sweet little book that could, you know, it's like, I can do it. And that, you know, I think it's, it's, I think it's fun because it's accessible for people because of the, they're like little Rorschach tests too, right? Like, I know that people look at those and they're like, Ooh, well, that's not what I see. You know, I see this and yeah, I didn't call them haikus. They're three line poems though, but they're okay. not really haiku. I looked at them I'm like similar to Korean language. Mm, but they're not Korean. I'm very confused. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody video went language. And so then I pulled up the stuff and I'm like, I'm running through the Korean symbols. No, none of these are the Korean symbols. Just wanted to make sure. <laughs> not Japanese symbols. They, they do look, they have that because, and I think it's partly because she used the Sumi ink and the brush strokes. So I think that's part of why it was part of the art of it. Yeah. It gives you so much peace. It feels like peace and balance. Thank you. Yeah. So. We have to talk two things. One, how did you actually get a publishing house as a poet? Two, oh, 
how do you revise your poems? Because you said you put the first draft into the world, but I'm assuming there's a second and third draft that happens not in the world. So Jan right. asked this because she's never seen me revise a poem in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I actually do what they say you're not supposed to do. And I revise a lot as I go, number one. But, but and then the, I'll do the revising part first. And then the other thing is that I really, unless I'm going to use a poem then in a book later, I don't go back. I don't go back and revise all those poems. Are you kidding me? I, how many thousands of poems have I written? Good grief. Oh my gosh. But then when I come try to put them together for a collection and I, you know, I'm just seeing how does this work? Wait, this one, this one, this one. At that point, I take those poems and I'll, I'll edit those ones. So the ones that are going to be used in the future or the, if I'm going to submit them somewhere else, which I honestly don't do much anymore. I almost never submit poems because, <laughs> because it sucks to get rejected, but also because, you know, the great thing is that because I've been putting these poems out in the world every day, I have this, I have thousands of people who read my poems every day already. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I'm getting that feedback that I need. Like, it doesn't actually matter to me. I shouldn't say that. Of course, I love it oh, having it well, published but somewhere, but that is not the point. The point is the writing, right? The point is the sitting down and noticing and paying attention and getting wrestled by the world and meeting a blank page and what happens. Like that is the whole point. I always say the poem is like the happy byproduct that of this primary process. But I do think that revising has that similar thrill and that it it allows us to meet that poem, whatever it was, and say, okay, now what do you have to teach me? Now, how do I serve you? And that's the thrill is when it's not just about like taking out that and just and putting in comma or not, you know, it's about what does this poem still have to teach me about what does it mean to be alive? Have I asked all the questions that I need to ask? Have I is there a surprise in here still? Is there, did the metaphor go deep enough? Did the, is the ending true? Is, is every line true? And if it isn't true, is there something truer? Like that's the thrill in revising for me it is not necessarily just like this nitpicky graduate school stuff. I don't mean to put down graduate schools, but maybe I kind of do. You know, I feel like the, the thing is that we, that, that for me, the practice of both writing and then later revising the poem is, is this act of service, of being in service to the poem and making sure that we're as out of the way as possible and that the, the mystery of what it is to be alive is what's coming through, right? And of course, there's, there's so much craft involved with that. Like, how does the poem move and what's at stake? And is there show and tell and how does it rub and does it sing? And, do, you know, those are, those are all things that I'm interested in. I guess really both when I'm writing it and when I'm revising it, but you just can have a little more perspective if you read it later. <clears throat> can you give can me one second? Oh, so we're doing like all the stops today. I guess like just this no phone calls are happening, like like um, <laughs> poem finding is happening. I don't even know what's going on. What's we're going gonna, on? Ooh, that's a good, but that doesn't fit our new book. Otherwise, yep, because I have a whole poem. So how long does it take you to write a poem? Wait, we were talking about, we, we were going to talk about how oh, she got a publish. publish. Publisher and then how long? So publisher, the first book I did, the first publisher I found, now this is back in 1999. And I went to the publisher who was uh, of a little small company. I'm forgetting the name, Western Reflections Press. It was over the mountain in Uray, you know, about an hour away. And I had sent them a query email and said, hey, I'd like to do a book of poems about the San Juan Mountains. That's where I live. And uh, I ended up, they said, okay, well, come on in and talk with us about it. So this publisher had like four other jobs, but he, including he was a judge. And I met him in the judge's chambers. There he is in his black robe. He's a super tall man. He's sitting behind this big desk looking like a judge. <laughs> and uh, and I, I'm you know a little nervous and I'm like, um, well, I'd like to do a book of poems about the San Juan mountains. And he looks at me, he says, Rosemary, poetry doesn't sell. Yeah. And I said, I know. And that's why I thought we could do it with black and white photography. And he says, 
rosemary. The only thing that sells as bad as poetry is black and white photography. And I said, well, I think it would work for it. I gave him all the reasons why I thought it would work and it could be sold to tourists. And I had a famous musician who said he would write an introduction. And I was like, and I'll help sell it. And oh, finally they said, yes. They said, yes. Um, they only wanted to do poems about the San Juan mountains. I had wanted to put a bunch of love poems in there and they were like, that doesn't fit. That's not the, the and I was like, ah. and so that book ended up coming out. Here it is, look how pretty it is. Nice. Oh, cloth cover and it's got just gorgeous images by Eileen Benjamin. Oh, you can't, this, I the blur function is really it not is. Um, anyway, it's a gorgeous little book. It ended up selling 8,000 copies, which is, if you've tried to sell a poetry book, enormous for a book of poems. Um, honestly, the poems aren't very good. It's back in 1999 and, but they were, they were appropriate for this region. So that was one way to get into publishing a book of poems was to have a book that was relevant beyond being about poetry, right? Uh, because he was right. Poetry typically does not sell, but it was a gift book and people loved to give it as presents and that it was pretty. It felt good in the hands. So that was, it was like a little trick. Um, and then I self-published a book right after that, which wasn't a book at all. Check it out. Um, it's a little box of poems. Nice. Yes. This blur function is driving me out of my mind. Uh, yeah, anyway. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's all these little loose leaf pages and really cool. um, I hand folded <laughs> several thousand of these boxes and glued the little pictures on and cut them out. And anyway, my friend designed it. Um, I was like, let's do a book. And she's like, okay, let's do something different. And I said, no. And she said, oh, come on. Everybody can do a book, do something special. And it turns out again, you know, it's this pretty little corrugated cardboard box and it feels good and it feels like a gift and people bought a ton of them. Again, the poems in them, I was, you know, I was sincere. So I think that the, the thing that I learned though about with those two projects, and those were the first two, was that there were ways to sell poetry that made it relevant to people that might be beyond just having a, a regular, you know, a regular book of poems. And um, that was, that was important. That was important for me to learn. So I've done these, uh, several other collaborations with another photographer, a color book, and uh, then that one with Jill that we looked at earlier. And I just think that the finding a publisher for your work partly means really understanding that publisher's world. And then what the publisher wants to know is, can you sell books? Because the publisher's in it to make money. And it turns out that I'm actually really good at selling books because I go do a lot of readings and I go do a lot of readings for, all right, poets don't buy a lot of books. I do. I mean, oh my God, look, these shelves, these are all, you can't really, it's not, I'm hating my blur function, but that's all po like I buy poets books, but most poets don't, uh, for all kinds of reasons. So I learned to go do poetry readings for people who weren't poets, like the American business women's groups and rotary groups and all these, you know, all these people who maybe don't think they like poems and then they hear them and they're like, Oh, I like that. And if they're business people, then they have money so they can buy books, which they do it. So publishers want to know, can you sell your book? And I say, yeah, I can sell my book. I can sell you thousands of books. And they're like, you can. I just love the way that you said that because you absolutely believe that because everyone goes poetry doesn't sell and say oh yes it does yes, it does. and they go yeah, uh yeah. no it doesn't i'm like do you understand that you are a poet everything that you write every line that you write is a basically a line for a t-shirt so, <laughs> so take that ip and put it somewhere where everyone's gonna see it and be like i love that shirt i love that line where'd you get it from here's a book or you know you can get it online from here you can get the same shirt online from here and you just give them cards and keep them moving and they will go buy that book not they'll buy the shirt, shirt or they'll buy the book or they'll buy both 
That is really smart. See, that's it. So just finding the way to meet people in a way that makes the poems feel relevant. You can put them in their hand and they're like, most people are like, I don't really want that. But if you can get it in their hand and they'll look at it and they're like, oh, I do like that. You're like, yeah, yeah, that's it. You get so many ways. I was going to say, first of all, Shiro, you are Shiro now. <laughs> <laughs> because you know how many times we have discussions with, this is one of the, this is one of the reasons I don't really have discussions with other poets that are aware of that spirit or whatever. But we do, because we I love mean, but, all poets. But we definitely do. I mean, but like, um, it's because you get to the point where we talk about art and you talk about business. And if you talk about business, well, then you dirty, you still need your art. And uh, I don't believe that. I believe the business comes before the art. Like, just, you should have a plan. Some semblance of a realistic plan before but, just making art for art's sake. Unless it's just for you. Because if it's just for you, then yes. But also, <laughs> but if have, it's for money, mm -hmm. business. How do people get into reading? Genre. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. true. They get into it, genre. But they, can, they stay for poetry sometimes. So... You just have to get them to stay for poetry. Right, exactly. So, yeah, um, I think people don't know often that they need it. And I believe so much that we need it. We need it. It's it's nourishing. I believe someone um, else asked why we chose to, I'm being real narcissistic today, I'm so sorry. Why we chose to write our poetry, write what we were, our topic about was poetry. And I said, because poetry is fundamental. Mm -hmm. Because Hickory, Hickory dickory, dickory dock. dock, the mouse ran out the clock, and you know the rest of that by heart. How do you know it? Because it's a rainy hole. And it was one of the first few things that you learned. Yeah. Thing that you like tend to learn when you were a child it has a rhythm and poem to it. Mm -hmm. So it's fundamental to everything we do. Of course, I'm going to write it. Oh, true. No matter how many times you say you don't want it, it's still a part of it. You kind of do. You just don't know it yet. It's like an inundated <laughs> person. You just don't know it yet. I think so many people had bad experiences, you know, with a teacher who made them feel stupid. Mm -hmm. So of course they don't like it if that's what they think it's about is making them feel stupid. But all right. So this is a great point since we talked about telling. Forget about how long it takes to write a poem. It's not important. I mean, you write them. That's what's important. It takes <laughs> a day. It takes a day. day. It takes her a day. Exactly. <laughs> no. Um, but, uh, can you tell people where to find out more information about buying your books? And yes, your and your for books. sure. Um, you can go to my website, which is rosemary.com. That's spelled R-O-S-E-M-E-R-R-Y, like Merry Christmas. It was my two grandmothers, Rose and Mary. And um, so I got both my grandma's names there, rosemary.com. And you'll find lots of the books there. Lots of the books there. Some of, you know, I'd say about four or five of them are on Amazon. If that's how you like to support corporate business. Um, <laughs> I personally think Jeff Bezos doesn't deserve anything else, but um, uh, you know, you can always, of course, go to your local bookseller and say, Hey, I'd like some poem books of poems by Rosemary. And that's good too. Fabulous. Oh, and where can people find your podcast? <laughs> you can find the podcast at emergingform.com. Thank you so and much. And you can find the daily poems at a hundred fallingvales.com. That's all spelled out. A hundred fallingvales.com. And then I post them there every day. So they also go out by MailChimp, but if you don't want that much mail in your inbox, because it's every day, um, then you can just find them all on that website for the last, I think for the last 10 years, they're on there. That's amazing. I love it. I love it yeah, so much. Amazing. Yes. Thank you so much for coming on today. We really appreciate it. You can find out everything the ladies are doing on www.andithoughtladies.com. While you're there, go down to the bottom of the page and see the charities that we probably That's support. Right, right I know, right? I'm trying to promote our new website. Y'all are so pretty. <laughs> and um, just remember, y'all, wisdom is all around you. If you're open to finding it and accessible. So peace and love you guys. Well, well, no, no. And Jade, bye-bye. Oh, yeah. Thanks for listening.